What's up, everybody? It's Tyler Bryant from Tyler Bryant and the Shakedown, and you're listening to Interview Under Fire. All right, everyone, Sonny back here with another new episode of Interview Under Fire. Tyler Bryant, man, thank you so much for joining our podcast today on IUF. This is a big time of the year for you and the guys over at Tyler Bryant and the Shakedown with the release of your fourth studio album, Pressure, which comes out this Friday, October 16th on Snake Farm Records. Yeah, Congratulations on all of the well-deserved recognition you've been getting so far. But before we get to all that, I'm going to ask a very important question, man. It's a very simple okay. question, but I think it's an important one to ask considering where we're at right now in this in our live. How are you, man? <laughs> I know. Hey, that's a great question. Um, you know, I am doing great. Luckily, my my family is healthy. My you know my wife is healthy. I'm I'm healthy for, you know, as far as I can see. Um, so yeah, I'm doing good. How about you? Are you? How's everything in Dallas? Bro, we talked about it right before the interview started, man. It this is like therapy, and you know, I I, I don't know how it is like over in Tennessee and Texas. I'm sure you've heard on the news. There's so much information being thrown left and right. Like we go back to like phase two, then all the way back to phase three again and back to phase one. It's so backwards. Like, you know, cause this is weird. Cause this is my past birthday weekend. And this is the first time I actually went out and did anything. It felt so yeah. weird getting back into that lifestyle. Cause I used to go to a show every week, you know, oh, yeah, this yeah. pandemic. I don't know yeah. how it was before you all this. It's, it was just a, um, it was just a, I don't want to try to use to it. In other words, you know. Yeah, but, absolutely. I mean, we got to make the best of the situation. I hope you're yeah. doing the same thing, right? Yeah, I mean, that's the, make the best of the situation has sort of been the uh, mantra this this whole time. You know, that's why that's why we have a new record. It's like, how can we take this and make something out of it? You know, and it's yeah. this situation has provided a lot of a lot of cool new opportunities as well. You know, I mean, I, I'm not saying that it's a great situation by a long shot, but you know, you you kind of gotta the swing at the balls that are thrown. Yeah. You know, I want to backtrack a little bit because being away from the stage a lot as of late, how are you keeping up your vocals and guitar chops these days? Is that affecting your musicianship? Has anything changed for your routine wise lately, if at all? Mm -mm. Nope. I wouldn't say that anything's changed because I mean, even when we're on the road, I'm, I'm playing guitar backstage all the time. I'm constantly singing. I'm constantly writing songs. You know, I, I, yeah. I'm, I consider myself a songwriter really before anything. And this, like what I do is I come down to my studio every day, I start making a song and then that gives me an excuse to play guitar because I've got something to play on. You know, it's like, for me, I can't just, uh, I, I, I need to kind of have a purpose musically. And so I'll, I'll make a drum beat. I'll play bass. I'll play guitar. I'll come up with some lyrics or a melody and, and then it's it's sort of like I'm getting to work all of the muscles, you know, musically and creatively. Um, but yeah, that's I've been making just as much music as ever. We're I was I was talking with my wife this morning. It's like we're to today I'll be working with an artist and finishing up the fourth record recorded here in my home studio. You know, that's it's just, we're just trying to keep you know keep the tools sharp and and stay creative. Yeah, that I mean, staying creative, it's easier said than done. You guys are definitely doing that. You know, with Tyler Bryant and the Shakedown, your group, you know, you guys have been together for 11 years when you first started. I want to ask, how was a touring life for you personally? Because you guys did do some extensive touring throughout your career, Tyler. You know, you played a download festival, Rock yeah. in Rio, a show where guys are drinking blood. I know there was another. <laughs> I know you'd mentioned that in one of your interviews. We could talk about that, too. But you've also, you know, you know, played with, you know, ACDC, Guns N' Roses, played with so many different bands. I want to ask now, you know, what was your biggest takeaway from that? Because now you're taking like an unseen step back. And does it make you have a growing appreciation for the touring life? Because we're talking culture, fans, even the food. There's just so many yeah. things to pick apart about what makes touring life amazing. What was your favorite part about it? Well, I mean, so I, I come from a small town in Texas of 1,700 people, like uh, two hours down the road from where you're at. Uh, you know? What's the... What's Honey the Grove, thing? Texas. Bro, I got some friends from that area. Okay, I yeah. had no idea. That's awesome. I was born in Paris, <laughs> Texas. So, Oh, hey, uh, my, my boss is from Paris. Okay, great. <laughs> That's man. pretty awesome. Yeah, so I, I, um, you know, I grew up in a really small town. Um, and so one of my favorite things when I started going on the road at 17 was just experiencing 
diversity in a whole new way to where it's like I'm getting to meet people from all over who have completely different backgrounds from the background that I had. And we were all coming together for the same thing, which was rock and roll, you know, and that's one of yeah. the things is like that I that I, I think about a lot, especially like if I turn on the news right now, I think about like, man, all of these people who are fighting wouldn't fight if they were at an ACDC show because they all like you shook me all night long and they probably <laughs> spill their beer on each other and give each other a hug, you know? And that's one of the things I love so much about music and live music that I really miss. Um, I miss meeting our fans after shows. You know, it's always, that's always really rewarding to me because it sort of, it gives even more purpose to the songs that I write because then you, you meet someone and you hear their experience like, hey, this song helped me through this or hey, you know, uh, like on our last record, there were a few songs about anxiety and panic attacks and stuff like that. And uh, to meet people who are like, I feel like that too. All of a sudden I'm like, hey, I'm not the only one. I've got these friends who are like me, you know, and, and uh, that's something I miss. I miss that interaction, you know. So one of the things that so this is a very popular topic, you know, on my show for the last six months, like we talked about. And everything that you just encompass right now, that just describing the interaction with the fans, how the live performance is a very important part of you, Tyler. I, you know, and, and I totally understood that throughout your career. But I wanted to ask, and you've seen it for the last six months, live streaming. A lot of the bands that we've seen taking their whatever they did live onto the screen. You know, we have, we've had bands like Code Orange and some, yep. I think Lamb of God did one uh, a few weeks back. I went to the Metallica show. Uh, two uh, about two months ago, I don't know if you knew about that. Uh, North America they did the they did the live streaming. Dallas sold out like just like that. Luckily, my friend had a ticket. It was so odd because I I went there and it was, you know, I'm not even kidding. That was my first ever time going to a Metallica event. I've never seen Metallica live. You can't make this stuff up. I go there. It's just a sea of cars and like just a just a desert part of the town, and there's like a, just a just a screen in the front and. What's the popular thing that we hear when you guys play? Oh, let me see see those horns, guys. And you see just yeah. a, a sea of horns of the fans in front of you. What did we get? Uh, hey, let me hear you honk your horns, guys. So if you rolled on your window, you just hear a bunch of cars just honking out into the night. The it new was, definition of rock horns. <laughs> it was great. And then three, three Days Grace opened. It was, it was great. But, you know, it made me miss the live experience even more personally because yeah. like i said i was i used to be a show at, at a show every week before the pandemic oh, but yeah. i wanted to ask you being on the road as long as you have having the interactions that you have that you just talked about do you think the quarantine induced live streaming surge that we're seeing right now is that going to affect the touring musician business going forward do you still see bands doing this even after all this is over personally i think i think so i mean okay. I don't, uh, I just, because I, I think it, while str I feel like streaming is sort of just sort of a bridge to get us through. I, do, I, I personally don't enjoy watching a streamed concert as much as I enjoy watching a real concert where I'm standing there and we're packed in and like everyone's energy is kind of affecting everyone else's energy and the band is, you know, actually really loud and you can feel it in your chest and, uh, I don't think that there's a replacement for that. You know what I mean? Um, with that said, I, I have watched some live streams that I've really loved and and it's sort of uh, made me feel closer to that experience that I miss. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we're, we're getting ready to do our first live stream and-, and uh, This Friday actually, right? Yeah, and it's like, man, hats off to all these bands who have done it so much because it does take a lot of energy and, and, and intention to do it and make it feel special. Because, it, I mean, like for us, it's like whenever we first started, I had to check myself because like I live for that energy, the exchange between us and the people who support us. And when we started, I was like, wow, this is like sound check. And then it's like, wait a second. No, like we you have to I have to picture them in my head. And, and you know, we we had to kind of take that and be very intentional with the energy that we were putting into it. Um, but yeah, it's it's just it's so different. Um, but it's it's exciting, you know, and it it's it beats not having shows. Yeah, I mean, there's no right or wrong answer to this. I love asking this question because so many artists, like you know, like yourself, they have so many expressions on what they want to do. Some some of them say, "Oh, I don't want to do anything until all this is over," and then some of them say, "Yeah, it's a way for me to engage with the fans. It's a way to keep me sane, so to speak." Yeah. You know, it actually Absolutely. allows me to do something. 
But hey, you're doing your first live streaming. You know, this uh, is pre-recorded, I believe. This yeah, Friday, we, right? We, we pre-recorded because that see that this is where my problems with a lot of the live streams are. I'm sure it was not this way for Metallica because they're Metallica, you know, but like for <laughs> a lot of bands that are not on that level, a lot of the platforms that you have to do a live stream, it's the, you know, the audio quality suffers. It's the, you know, I've, I've watched some where it's like the videos cutting out, the audio's cutting out and, and people, you know, it's just a, it's a weird kind of broken experience for some of the ones that I've tuned into. And, uh, you know, with that said, there have been really good ones as well, but we thought, okay, this is our first and, and pretty much the, it's the only full band electric show that we have planned to do this year. So we wanted okay. to go really big, like swing for the fences with it. I don't know why. This is my second baseball reference I've made this whole time. I don't know what's, I don't know if I'm sick or something. Well, but, we come from baseball um, state, so it's good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Um, but we, but we, we thought like we, like we have to 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 go for it. You know, we have to to really put everything into this. So we rented a space. We rented lights. We brought out the sound equipment. We did everything completely ourselves like i personally edited the entire show together wow i went through all of the behind the scenes footage from the studio and like tried to give give our fans like a look into our process we did interviews with all the band members and and kind of got everyone's take on this time the record you know that that whole thing so it's a, it's i think it's going to be a really interesting experience for our fans did you ever have to like put yourself in a state like okay this could be a live show, like your routine, whatever routine you had pre-show, you know, did you do anything like that of the norm? Like just to get yourself yeah. back into that mental state? Yeah, I have a couple of little um, like rituals that I do before every show that I totally did. Um, and it was it was really strange. I have a couple of songs that I listen to before okay. each show. I have a, a pre-show playlist. Um, and you got to realize like our last real show was with Clutch on December 28th. Oh my God. And we're talking, that's two, two months away from a whole year since you're of a live show. I can't even fathom that. At and this, this is coming, this is a, a band, like we're a band that does like a hundred to 200 plus shows a year. Yeah. So it was, it was just a total head trip. You know what I mean? And, uh, but yeah, so I, I, I have like a couple of oils that I rub on that, that get, you know, help me get in the zone and so a couple of like random little rituals that I do before every show and I did it and it that alone that like alone was just pretty far out because it it made me feel like I was about to go play a show and then we walk we walked into the venue and there's nobody there <laughs> man I I can't even begin to imagine so, so it and a lot of the artists I've spoken to they go through the motions to just make them feel like okay this is a regular show right yeah. yeah let's go up there of course i have the liberty to mosh in my room if i wanted to i mean but it's yeah. different if i see tyler bryant and and your your boys up there in front of me as opposed to on the, on the screen yeah it's also that notion where okay maybe someone in south america or um you know just indonesia somebody who maybe doesn't have access to someone like you and then they could just yeah tune into your show that way but yeah that's what's that's what's so cool is it's like you know if we say we play a show in lexington kentucky people mm -hmm. from lexington kentucky and surrounding cities are going to come to that show for this people from all over the world can come in and and the the platform that we've chosen to to use for this show is it's got a chat built in so people from all over the world are going to be able nice. to hang out and, and we're going to be hanging out in the chat while the show broadcast and you know trying to interact as much as we can because that's the thing that's missing so it's like how can we get as much of that as possible but i would i would like to say you know it, the we, it didn't take too much like psyching up because we were playing the this new album for the first time and the only time with four people you know because like our bass player of almost eight years left the band in february and you know this yeah, record, Noah. it was made with th the three of us so right. caleb graham and i had never played it with four people and so this was the first time so there was like the excitement was like you know the pot was boiling over the top did you and ever get right yeah no no i don't mean to interrupt you there but uh, i was going to ask though because you're talking about presenting it live there are other people i've spoken to that they told me that when they released a new album let's say during this time did it feel like it didn't feel complete to you inside because you didn't get a chance to express it to the fans in person um, it didn't, 
I didn't I didn't experience that feeling. Um, I do because I I know I know how it'll go. We've we have we have a, a good enough relationship with our audience that I I can picture it in my head. I know I know how it's going to play out. Like whenever we whenever we're able to do a show again and we open a show with pressure, people are going to know what to do. You know, yeah. and I, like with a song like like the old me, I can go yeah. When we play this song in Paris, France, the audience is going to sing it louder than me. I'm not going to get that for a second, but I know that it's, I know that that will be the case. Um, so yeah, I, I think for me the the album felt like such an accomplishment to finish because we made it in lockdown, we made it in my home studio. It so that that was really rewarding. That uh, it was so rewarding that I think I wasn't even thinking about touring yet i was just happy that we made something beautiful during this time yeah couldn't have said it better and speaking of pressure i know we talked about everything from top to bottom i promise we'll talk about pressure right now <laughs> coming out october 16th on snake farm you know when i heard this you know blues and hard rock like it was just just the epitome of what you guys do and you guys do it to perfection and we're talking about and we're talking from states who are very popular in that genre texas and tennessee yeah, you know man. you know and is it right that you recorded this in 20 something days yeah, it was 20 days exactly. Um, you know, it, having having a studio in my house, I, I often say that it's like an alcoholic living in a bar. You know <laughs> okay. what I mean? So I, I just lived and breathed this album from start to finish, you know, sometimes probably to a fault. You know, there were a couple of times where I was like getting a little crispy there, but... Um, That's okay. <laughs> yeah, we just we just kind of dove, dove headfirst into the deep end and... and ended up with pressure so i know that you started pressure off with 37 songs and you narrowed it down to 13 and you re-recorded them all what was that process like i mean uh, you know you can ask it this way how much did things change from when you first started composing on pressure to where you ended up finishing it did a hmm. lot change in between did nothing change in between was it already a specific sound you knew you wanted with pressure yeah i'm well i don't i don't think we really had a specific sound in mind I think because originally, so f flashback to January of this year, we had been talking with our label and with our team about re-releasing Truth and Lies, our previous album, with some unreleased acoustic songs. And then when Noah left the band, we were like, okay, hold on. We can't re-release anything. We have to almost reinvent and figure out, find our footing. Um, you know, and, and Noah left the band on really great terms. That was, it couldn't have gone better like Noah's our brother like I talked to him this morning but it's still it still kind of left us a little wobbly you know mentally I think especially because we were down a man so I I ordered a bass I ordered a shell pink bass <laughs> and uh and we we just started jamming you know it's like what do we do let's let's play music and uh we had a we had a handful of demos our, our process is pretty much make up a song record it don't think too much about the recording, but just get get a representation of the song. That way it doesn't get lost or forgotten because okay. that happens. And uh, so we ended up with 37 of these that could have, they could have been a record. You know what I mean? That's but, like three records, if you think yeah, about it. I know, I know, but we do that for every record. There's always just a, an wow. absurd amount of songs. Um, and so, I mean, some of, the, some of the songs that feel like they were written for 2020 were written ahead of time. And I mean, but that's the thing is like we called the record pressure because we felt like everyone in the world was experiencing pressure. That was something we were feeling with all of all of our work being gone. Essentially, all of our friends were out of work. You know, it's just everyone was kind of feeling it. And uh, so we thought this needs to be the opening song because this is where it's starting. And and that 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 was sort of like the the way that the discussions went when it came to narrowing down the songs is this is where it all begins this song this person that's basically starting the album out going i feel pressure coming down on me and then from there let's explore different feelings and we just started going through the songs and thinking about which ones would be conducive to recording in a basement would be conducive to recording down dirty raw live without you know a lot of the luxuries that we've had in the past when we're working in state-of-the-art studios um so we were thinking about how the sonics would play into it, how the songs would translate, 
which songs lyrically felt appropriate for the time, which songs felt inspiring to play, and also just what what are we going to have fun playing? You yeah. Know? Let's talk about Roger Allen Nichols for a second, because he co-produced the album with you, and he's known for his work with Paramore, Me Without You, Larkin Poe, you know, your, yep. your, your partners in that band, Reeves Gabriel, Steven Tyler. Was there a sense of comfortability in the studio knowing that he was there? Well, yeah, so... A little backstory uh, on Roger and I's relationship. I met Roger when I was 17, when I moved to town. And he's been my best friend in the world since then. Like, Roger was the one guy that would shoot me straight, always. Like, <laughs> I, could, I could send him a song and he'd be like, dude, listen, that's a great tune, but don't get lazy and just play a guitar solo. Why don't you actually write a bridge, man? That's you know, someone he, that pushes you. That's good. Yeah, no, I mean, he he's pushed me pushed me a lot over the years. Um and and that's something I really really value and and he and I've sent him pretty much every song I've written since I've known him, and so he's been very he knows he knows me as an artist he knows the Shakedown as an artist we've co-written songs with him on every Shakedown record, um, and so whenever we decided we wanted to do this record in the basement I called him and said hey I've talked to Caleb and Graham and we want you to come be part of this in a way that you haven't been part of something in the past. Like come basically be our fourth band member. And, uh, and he, he was like, cool. When do you want to start? And I was like, what about tomorrow? He's like, cool. I'll, <laughs> I'll get some masks for us. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he just, he brought so much to it because, and I, and I also thought, Hey, Roger's got all of, he's got an insane studio and he's got all this great gear. We could have just done it at his studio, but we wanted to make it, in the basement and kind of set up some barriers for ourselves to bounce around between. And then I was like, Hey, so will you bring over this piece of gear? Will you bring over this? And he's like, no, man, we're making a basement record. Let's use what we've got. <laughs> let's, let's figure out how to do it. And and I think he brought a really cool approach to the, the project for sure. I feel like this is just a very unique way to go about pressure in itself. When you look back on it, right? You, you're, you're essentially creating pressure to yeah. then figure out how to, how to deal with it. I want to throw two more names at you. Rebecca Lavelle, you know, your yep. wife, you know, who's at Larkin Poe, great band, uh, guest starting Crazy Days, Misery, and even some of Hitchhiker, Charlie Starr from Blackberry Smoke. Man, Tyler, what was it like bringing in outside professionals in their respective fields into your world of making music? Did that make the process easier knowing that they were present? Yeah, well, I mean, so with, with Rebecca's feature on Crazy Days, so Crazy Days was sort of the catalyst for this, this whole record. I wrote that song at the start of lockdown, um, just kind of for, as for something to keep myself entertained with. And, uh, it's weird cause it, I wrote it and I, I was kind of, I started making the demo and I thought to myself like, this is oddly positive sounding. That's weird that this time has inspired something so positive sounding. Um, and I, I took it upstairs and Rebecca was working on something. I was like, Hey, can I play you this idea I'm working on? And so I think by the second course, she had started kind of humming along. And I was like, hey, will you, will you come sing? You know, and it was very organic the way that that happened. And then that song sort of caught the attention of our label and our team. And they said, hey, we should put this out. And I said, well, we have to, we have to do a shakedown version because the, the demo was just me playing everything. It was just kind of me throwing paint at a wall and hoping something was, was cool looking. And uh so that was that was one of the first songs we did, and and I asked her, I couldn't hear it without her voice, so I asked her if she would sing on the record, and she just she absolutely crushed it. So, and then with "Holding My Breath," that recording was finished. The record was had already been uh, mastered, actually, and I'd asked Charlie, you know, probably a couple of weeks before if he would sing on the song, and he said that he would. But I didn't want to. I didn't want to like bother him about it because I I thought maybe he was just like saying yes and, you know, I didn't want to be like. Oh, oh, by the way, did you did you can you do it? Um, so then, <laughs> as casual as possible. Was, yeah, when when the record was finished, I just sent him sent him the record. I was like, here's the record mastered, and he wrote like, do you still want me to sing on that song? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> so he he just recorded his vocal at, at home and and it kind of elevated the song even more yeah and the songs we just talked about and considering the 
the people that you partner up with recording it under pressure, Tyler, yeah. you know, so to speak, you know, to what level do you like to have a theme for your records and how important are themes to you? Is that more about helping you guys write or sound or is that more for the audience? Cause a lot of artists, they don't really care about themes. They just do 10 songs in the studio and that's it. But I feel yeah. like there's a specific dilemma that you wanted to achieve with pressure. Yeah. I mean, this was, this was just kind of our way of, of digesting everything that was going on and, you know, whether I, I think I, I, I consciously tried to tune out the outside world a little bit while we were making the record. And it's, it was so difficult to do, um, pretty much impossible to do because there's so, so much going on. So I think a lot of the intention in the songs, like even if there is a, uh, a song that has nothing to do with, you know, the pressure that we were all feeling, the intention is still very pointed and very direct, you know, whether it be to get away from it to like, yeah. you know, it was my way of like trying to tune that with a song like wild side that is, you know, just a party song pretty much. Um, or a song like coasting, for example, which that, you know, we, we thought about the arc of the record. So it starts with pressure and it ends with this song called coasting, which is sort of like, you got to keep coasting through it all. It's, it's, it's us trying to leave it on a very hopeful note, you know, because it's like, this can't be, this is not the end of live music. This is not the end of humanity. You know, I, I hope not. <laughs> no, it's not. Spoiler yeah. alert. It's not. <laughs> this, is, this is just like, it's just something that we're going through. So that's, that was sort of the idea of, of the, you know, the, the overall journey that this album takes us on. So do you see pressure as being a snapshot of where you are at a certain time in your life? Yeah, absolutely. I, like when I'll forever, I'll forever listen to this record and, and remember this time, you know, I'll remember basically having to sit down with everyone in the band and we all agreed and made a pact that we weren't going to hang out with other people that we were just going to, they were going to go from their houses to the studio. We did one big grocery store run and stuff, you know, cause normally like when you're working on a record, you, you have, you take breaks to get away from yeah. it, to go have dinner or something. And there was none of that. So we stocked up on all the supplies we needed for pretty much a month of recording. And, you know, there's no protocol to follow for a pandemic, dude. I mean, I mean, yeah, there's when you write an album release, there's a certain schedule that you have to follow that certain protocols. But for a pandemic, it's like, OK, here's what we do if this happens. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's challenging. You know, I, you know, of course, when I say that, you know, looking back, oh, this was the pandemic album. You know, I, I don't yeah. want I, I just hope that doesn't happen with artists because it was a way the way I see it so much music has been released this year. Amazing music, you know, yep. yours included. And the way I look at it, it just, it allowed for people like yourself, myself, people who are involved in the industry to grow yeah. personally and artistically that we have may and have not noticed before about ourselves. Yeah. That's from my perspective. Yeah, absolutely. And that was something that we also, we also talked about. We, cause we, we didn't want this to be just our pandemic album. We, we had multiple discussions about the songs and Hey, is this song going to still be, is it still going to kind of carry itself when this is all over? We don't want to make a record that is just for 2020. Like this has to be a good record in 10 years, you know, Yeah. beyond that. So, but that's, I mean, that's where it's like a song, like holding my breath, which, you know, the lyrics are, I'm holding my breath for better days, which sounds like it was written f for this. But since the beginning of time, people have, had to stay hopeful for better times, you know, whether you're struggling to provide for your family or if you're fighting to succeed or, you know, whatever it's, it's people need hope and people have felt pressure since <laughs> people existed. And uh, for that's why some of these songs that feel like they were written for this time and weren't, you know, it's why they made sense. And, it, you know, I think that the, this year just really did affect the way that they were performed more than yeah. anything else you know yeah very well said and i know we talked about baseball terms so i'm gonna go ahead and say this is the seventh inning home run stretch you know uh this is the <laughs> it's just like man what did i start here man here we are uh so this is the last part of the interview unfortunately but this is one of my favorite parts what i'm gonna do i'm gonna put you on the hot seat, hot seat. i'm gonna see if you know your own songs you up to that challenge okay sure all right, so I'm going to read a lyric here. Well, lyrics here. You just tell me what song you think it's from, okay? 
Okay. So uh, I'm going to go in random order. I'll, I'll start you off easy, but then I'm going to go all, all over the place. Hopefully not to confuse you, but oh man, <laughs> I think you're up for this. Okay. Are you nervous? Yeah, I am nervous because I, <laughs> I really do struggle to remember lyrics. But that goes to show how how diverse your 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 catalog is, how impressive it is. So I'm yep. gonna, I'm just gonna start you off here, okay? So here we go. Don't try to act so casual. I know it's under your Crazy skin. Oh, there you go. See, I told you to start off easy. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. What do we got here? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Give me a second here. I'm I'm laser focused. <laughs> When the dog is sleeping, let it lie. If you're not thick enough to take the bite, it's no in the blood. Yep. Nice. That's good. Okay. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> moving on. So I think I just gave it away in, on this one. Okay. Uh, boom. I got nothing to lose, nothing to hide, nothing to prove. Put your money in your mouth. Roll the dice. I know. It's, it's on to the next. <laughs> yeah. See? <laughs> Like a play on words. I was like, should I even say that? Okay. Yeah, no, you gave it away. Moving. <laughs> okay, moving on to this one. This one I'm not giving away. Well, maybe I am. Let your hair down. Spin around downtown. Give me that kiss. Amaze me. Well, everybody needs a little bit of love in a night that's a little bit crazy. Down. Is it downtown tonight? Uh, oh, lipstick Wonder Woman. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the I, was like, I was like, try that again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We haven't done that song in a, in a long time. That We haven't played that song since December 28th. If anything, I'm just making you rethink your set list. How about that? Dude, yeah. I mean, that was another <laughs> thing to do, the because we did um, a handful of older songs in the live stream. Yeah. and Or in the album release show. And I really had to focus on <laughs> the lyrics. Yeah, right? I, 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 I can imagine, because you had to go back and revisit so many. I felt like you have to revisit a time in your life to actually get that lyric out there to yeah. actually... We did, we did three rehearsals for the the show, and then I would come home and like write out the lyrics, you know, after each rehearsal to try and like re cement them in my brain. Yeah. Because like, there's been easily fifty to sixty songs written since a lot of I've played a lot of these songs last. Yeah. So it's like um, you're jamming a lot more information in there. All right, here we go. Pulled out from the station, 15 after 2, 300 miles away from Vegas. We had nothing better to do. Oh, my God. Good life. Yeah. You got Whoa. this. You see, you, see, you do know your own songs. <laughs> yeah. that's. I, have to think, I wrote that song when I was 17. Wow. You want to know a funny story about that song? Yeah. Uh, what I year was this really quick before you tell that? Because I'm looking up oh, the... Dude, don't make me do math. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. I, it, it, it had to be 2008. I believe. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, Cause I just moved to Nashville and I was, I was driving down uh, this street called West end uh, Broadway. The main drag there turns into West end. And I was listening to honeybee by Tom Petty and I was speeding and I got pulled over and uh, right by the uh, Parthenon here in Nashville and pulled, I pulled into that drive and the, uh, the officer came up and was like, Hey, why are you going so fast? And I said, I was listening to Tom Petty. I'm sorry. And he <laughs> said, what song are you listening to? And I said, honeybee. And he, he's like, have a nice night. He said, good answer. Nice <laughs> night. So I thought I went home and I wrote that song. Good life about, you know, just cause I felt like I'm in Nashville. I'm starting a band. I, you know, it, that was, uh, but yeah, thank you, Tom Petty for that. Man. Thank you to Tom Petty. And, uh, you know, rest in peace man that, I mean, that's that's an amazing story wow yeah i mean I that's really, that goes to show how big of an impact he has on all of us man even him yeah i i actually uh, recently told that to uh steve ferroni who is the drum, drummer in the heartbreakers and because yeah. he started playing crazy days on the tom petty sirius xm station and uh what was his reaction i told him he said he just said that's so funny tom would have loved that story oh man bro yeah, okay I, I that's think, great Tom getting somebody out of a, a ticket is a good thing, you know? That's always a good thing. Man, now I may I may have to, well, I'm not getting any ideas, but I don't know, yeah. maybe I am. We'll see. <laughs> All right, we got two more songs here. Okay. Cold Sweat Fever, Even If You Don't Need Her, She'll Make You a Believer When She Comes In Shaking Like. Oh, uh, Last One Leaving. Yeah, I was going to say, whoa, but you got that yeah. down. Okay, last one. Well, I'm addicted to the fix over a chemical. I need it. I need it. I need it. I need a miracle. Hey, prayer. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you got all of it, man. That's that's pretty good. I've had I've had artists who say, "Oh man, I won't get any of these songs," and they got all of it. 
And then some artists say, yeah, yeah, I'll get all of it. And they didn't get any of it. Wow. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a really interesting game. Yeah. That's a, uh... I, yeah, I like to do that because it, it shows, again, I don't mean sound like a broken record here, but it shows how impressive your catalog is if you just date back to like the first lyric you ever wrote on your first ever EP. And, wow. you know, it shows how how far and how mature your sound went from where you started to where you are right now. I think that's just an impressive thing. I think that's a great thing for listeners to hear because it yeah, man. It, it, show, it shows, you know, how long you're, you've been playing and the development of your lyrics, the maturity, and just, again, it, it's a good way to connect with the fans. Yeah, there's it's another goofy, way to do it. There's some goofy lyrics for sure. If there's a, you know, it's like <laughs> songwriting is one of those things that, you know, I feel like I'm a forever student, you know, I'm just like, I, I study these, these writers, you know, and recently it's been guys like Guy Clark and Tom Waits and Townsend. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people, when they ask me what I, what I've been listening to are kind of like, what well, that's, we were expecting expect you to say like you're listening to a lot of royal blood or something and i really do just love like great story brothers you know man okay not so, the royal blood isn't it but no no of course not and i'm gonna throw another pun here you're gonna you're gonna probably be like what am i doing that was a grand slam <laughs> that was a grand slam you got the lyrics down so before we finish things off for your tyler do you have anything you want to promote like any shout outs anything you want to mention with pressure tyler bryant hey, shakedown hold, hold, hold on you, <laughs> you got the... <laughs> what am i doing <laughs> um look dude i got a baseball pal- awesome. logo on it <laughs> holy mi- okay that okay that's pretty awesome this was our this was a, a present that i got uh at the end of the blackberry smoke tour from from blackberry smoke i actually have a i have a baseball bat made from the fender custom shop as well do you have that? By the, yeah, I do. I have to see it. I have to see it now. I actually have it on a like a wall hanger by the door too. It's it's sunburst. It's the like the classic Fender sunburst. Uh, bring up the middle. Uh, that logo. I'm gonna see that. Wow. Okay. Dude, so this is this is a, a funny story about this. Is Fender asked me to play a rock and roll version of "Take Me Out to the Ball Game." Which, mind you, I know I know nothing about baseball. Like I played baseball when I was a kid, and I was the alternate on the baseball team because I sucked. So like I I wasn't even allowed to sit in the dugout with the team. I had to sit on the outside of the dugout. So I would like go out and play the Star Spangled Banner in my uniform, and then they would set me outside the dugout, and I would just hope that someone got hurt so I could play. And uh, but that I did this. I did take me out to the ball game for Fender, and they gave me this bat. Dude, I'm speechless. I know. And now, now think about it. Now, can you imagine like playing that at like, think about it, the first baseball game with fans and you go to, I don't know, a Texas Rangers game down here and you just play that as an anthem. I'm going to plug that in. And anyone who's listening, that would be a great, amazing, great yeah. way to start things off. And so funny. Uh, that, that's pretty awesome. That you have that. I would love that story, man. We could just do a, just an, a whole separate episode of just stories of just, of just how you had your experience with like just music and like sports, whatever it is that you want to mention. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. Well, hit, hit me up anytime, man. This has been a, a really fun hang. And everyone who's listening, uh, you have your live streaming this Friday yep. on the 16th and, and promotion for pressure. Is there anything you guys have going forward? Just any, I don't know what, I know you had 37 songs written. I know you have a lot of songs that are just, in there yeah, yeah. somewhere i'm just i don't know how much you can mention about that so i just want to ask i think i think touring is still very up in the air for us you know we're, we're we are looking at options um but it's still it's still very much up in the air so there's nothing firm there but um i i would be surprised if pressure is the only album that we make during this time okay that actually has me excited now and everyone who's listening you know we got a lot of listeners here you know Listen to us on interviewunderfire.com. Check out Tyler Bryan and The Shakedown. Pressure comes out October 16th on Snake Farm Records. And buy the merch. You know, the bands can't do it without your help, you know. And it it's easier said than done. It's a very simple request. But buy the merch. I still have so much merch and albums, like, in the other corner of my room. I still yeah. buy records. Yeah, I still we- buy records. I love doing it. It's I, I believe the artwork is just as important, if anything. Yeah. That's just one thing about it. Dude, check this out. I got to show you this. Okay. <laughs> I just got my I just got my copy of this. I'm I'm just like a kid. Nice. Okay. Just, you know, being able to act, to actually hold it in my hand now, isn't that sick? How many grams? I don't know. 
Oh, that's like a that's like a nerdy thing for like vinyl collectors. I'm just trying to get into vinyl collecting. Like I, I was late to the game. Mm-hmm. I was always about collecting CDs. When, when I grew up, I had a CD player, you know, and I right. still kind of just continue that trend. And like, oh, I don't, know if this, I don't know if this one is 180 gram. I think we do have 180 gram options, though. Um, yeah, I'm trying to learn about how that works. Like that, like the heavier it is, the better it sounds. Or that's what I, I heard. I, don't I know. have no idea. It's, I have no idea. And you just continue making the great music you do, and we'll all be we'll all be good, man. Uh, yeah. Man. This has been great, man. Tyler, uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You know, you stay safe out there in Tennessee. And uh, obviously, we'll do this in person when you yeah. come to Dallas. I mean, you guys you guys have a great community here, just so you know, in Dallas. You know, and uh, we love you here in Texas. So we'll do this in person. Do it with you, Caleb or Graham, whoever wants to do the interview. Yeah, absolutely. It'll man. be like it'll be like a great like it's going to be like a tears of joy type of interview because we're just like, oh, my God, we're in the venue again. And here we are doing what we used to do back in the past. Yeah, I dude. Can't, I can't even fathom just that feeling, like going back to the normal things that we used to do. Yeah, man, I can't wait. I can't yeah. wait. Well, dude, hey, great hanging with you. Thank you for taking the time and uh, and take care of yourself. I feel, feel the pressure coming down on me. It hits like a hammer, drops that million D. I need, need a way out. Oh, can we drink? Cause I feel, feel the pressure. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Interview Under Fire podcast. If you guys liked what you heard, please subscribe and share our channel. And please leave a five-star review as that helps us tremendously. And also, if you guys have any questions or comments, you can find us at Interview Under Fire at Facebook or at Instagram. Or you can write us directly at schwag at interviewunderfire.com. That's S-C-H-W-A-G at interviewunderfire.com. Or Rezablade, that's R-E-Z-A-B-L-A-D-E at interviewunderfire.